Welcome to Business Amplified with host Kevin A. Dunlap. This podcast is for small business owners aiming to amplify their enterprises. Explore strategies to play a bigger game by becoming an author, public speaker, podcast host, or expanding your brand in other ways. Elevate your business on Business Amplified. Oh, hello, everybody. This is Kevin Dunlop with Business Amplified. And today, I want to say, first of all, I want to say thank you for uh, rejoining us today. However, today is somebody that I've known uh, on and off for about a year or so now. She also lives in North Carolina, just like I do. And therefore, I will go and introduce her. Her name is Nancy White. So, Nancy, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Kevin. And thank you for allowing thank me to have a fun time with you. Well, it's my pleasure. I, I know you've uh, and I've talked uh, several times, and you know, you know, we've talked about diff- uh, different kinds of business and and, uh, and other things, and we've even uh, talked about referring people uh, to each other. Uh, so, Nancy, for the audience that doesn't know who you are, or even the ones that do know who you are, could you tell us a l- little about who you are, what is it that you do, and why is it that you do it? Oh, thank you, Kevin. Uh, first and foremost, you know, you and I are both been in the entrepreneurial space for a while, and this is always a learning journey, and we're never going to stop learning. So corporate America kicked me out 40 years ago, and I decided that I was going to start this entrepreneurial journey, which has been an amazing journey over the last couple of decades. And one of the things I think for entrepreneurs especially is that you have to have that mindset that you know what, I want to learn from others. I'm not going to be able to do it by myself. And it's not just like going to that nine to five job where you can just leave it. So this has been great for me. I've started some businesses, some have flopped, some have, you know, done great. I've sold some, but at the end, you know, being in health and wellness in that space is so dear to me because I had a father that died when I was nine of Hodgkin's. And I had a brother that died at 22 of leukemia. In fact, he was studying to be a doctor in the Navy and discovered his own leukemia, Kevin, and lived two years longer. So I have always been in this space of, again, researching, learning, doing all these things to find out ways to be as preventative as possible, but also to be as combative. Because, you know, in this world that we live in, we're always going to be being bombarded, our minds, our bodies, and our spirits. But I love also, just like you, connecting people. And I've been leading networking groups for over 20 years. And I've had a franchise for a women's network group and had over 4,000 different ladies in my home and 150 nonprofits featured and been part of um, E-Women, E-Women Network for 20 years as a platinum member. So these are things we always want to find resources to be able to use for ourselves or to share. And to me, that's the beauty of networking. It's just not something that you're just going out there trying to just, quote, sell or finding your next client or customer. It's finding amazing resources for us to utilize and then also, again, to share with other people, which you do such a great job too, Kevin. Well, thank you, Nancy. And I, I and I will say that I, I also love networking. I, I love it, especially uh, uh, for me uh, during the times that was pre-COVID. And when I lived in Las Vegas, I used to go to a lot of networking events or like education based networking events. Like, you know, we had a three day event, four day event, uh, event. And I was living in Vegas at the time. And there's quite a few of them that happened in either San Diego or, or, or Los Angeles. And just going there, I, I met some of my closest friends uh, where I were at these networking events. It's someone I would never do, do business with, but, but but just having a like-minded person just to be around. Because that's one of the things I think that a, a lot of entrepreneurs I suffer from, especially if they are a solopreneur, is that they are working solo. They're working by themselves so that they don't have somebody they can bounce ideas off of. So having other like-minded people around, again, they're not going to necessarily be your customers, but they, they could be your accountability partner, or they could just be your friend, or they could be something on those, uh, on those lines. And back in, uh, pre-COVID, I used to go to those conferences a lot. I mean, from 2000, and I would say probably 13 until 2019, I probably went to, uh, over those six years, probably at least 25 or 30 different conferences. And I mean, I just, I I really uh, I miss that. And, and COVID changed that because a lot of this stuff went online. But the thing is, is that, that face-to-face, you know, shake somebody's hand or that, that buddy you haven't seen in a while, you just give them a big, a big hug. 
And you can do virtual hugs, but those are not quite the same thing. <laughs> and you can hug yourself, but it, again, it's not the same thing. So, yeah. yeah. Well, because I remember my very first accountability partner, uh, I met at, at an event and we became very, very, very close. And we ended up, uh, oh, she was from, uh, she's her, her heritage was Indian, but she was living in Vancouver, Canada at the time. I was in Las Vegas. And we, I mean, we're still very, very close friends. I mean, if I say anything about, how, she's my brown sister. If I ever start talking about that, that's exactly that's exactly who I'm talking about. And and I remember we were accountability partner accountability partners for about two years, where we would talk once a week, sometimes twice a week. And we got to realize that's that at that time that is an international call, you know, U.S. calling Canada or vice versa. So we had to figure out ways to uh, to get around that. Now we just use Skype, but but, but before excuse me, uh, uh, WhatsApp. But but before that, it was like let me get the the, the Canada Mexico plan for an extra five or ten bucks on my phone, so I can give her a call. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so go ahead. So, so tell me a little bit about uh, 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 about the stuff that you're doing right now here in Charlotte. Well, I am just still loving just helping people just to set up their healthy lifestyles. And just like you, it's not just Charlotte. I mean, we're global now uh, because of how we can connect with people. But I really um, love helping to hear what people are doing for their healthy lifestyle, Kevin, and celebrate the good things they're doing. And then finding out areas they may need to be tweaked in. Um, because, I mean, at 71, I want to continue to age with strength and vitality. And I think other people do, too. Not everybody has that healthy mindset. But, you know, more and more, as the closer to the next season of life we come to, people are being more aware and cognizant of the things that they're doing. The things we're doing today are affecting us for years to come. And a lot of people mm -hmm. don't realize our body completely regenerates every six to eight years, then you might as well make a new good one. I really love helping cancer thrivers, um, Kevin, especially since my father and brother both died of blood cancers. And I love giving people hope, especially when they've gone through some challenges um, that, you know, mm -hmm. they can do their best. And I love sending them some fun little tips and some things that gives them more peace of mind. Um, so I love doing that. And I also have a TV show on Win Win Women TV. I love having different ladies as guests from around the world, because everything we do pretty much um, nurtures our mind, our body, and our spirit positively or negatively. <laughs> and so when we can find those ways to really lift up other people and to be able to be able to bring some more joy and happiness and hope in the world, oh my goodness. Who doesn't want or doesn't need by the end of the day after they have gone through listening and hearing to all the negative things or going through things of life, they need to have something that is going to be able to lift them up. And I love helping people just to, you know, again, how to nurture that mind, that body, and that spirit. I call it BNR. We can bless and release. And you have to create openings to be able to receive things. And what do you think are some of the uh, biggest challenges that your clients are going through? Is it that they have not, they have to change their lifestyle or change their health lifestyle because maybe they're just not, not always eating the best foods or consuming the right uh, stuff? Well, one of the things I think most people, they just need to stop for just a moment and do an assessment just to see where they are. Um, because, you know, a lot of things that we've been taught growing up or whatever, it becomes just natural and habits. And it's not, mm. you know, for everybody forever. And again, as we go through different seasons of life, your body needs different things and um, different nutrients. And and I would, I was teasing a, a gal, she's a naturopath the other day, and, and I was talking to her about all the new, I call it fake food they're, they're creating and they're manufacturing and things. And we were talking about how our, our bodies handle those types of things. So I think a lot of people right now are all so busy, um, Kevin, that they just need to stop for a moment, acknowledge again all the good things they're doing. But if they've got things that need to be tweaked, um, they need to be able to make that adjustment. And just like entrepreneurs, I mean, you know, we set projects out and things, you know, you've got your goal, you reverse engineer it, you go to those steps to be able to reach that goal. It's the same thing with ourselves and our health. We want to do those little things day by day, step by step, and, and be able to reap the benefits. 
And that's one of the things I think a lot of people, I mean, when we were 20, we didn't care anything about when we were going to be 60 and what we we're, we were going to be doing. So, you know, I think people don't realize in this country to the pharmaceuticals and everything, every so ready to give somebody a quick fix, but they don't tell you the repercussions that could possibly be 20 and 30 years down the road. Well, well, that's true because I, I know when I was, um, I, I was born in, in 67. And when I moved to uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, that was 2001, uh, 2000, was, uh, 2000. So I was basically um, uh, 33 years old at that time. And, and some of the things that I was doing there, I was not thinking about the repercussions that it could be at a later time. And that's when I actually decided to get into doing some stunt work. And not realizing that you know the, the, you know those the, those jumps those falls you know that, that I'm th doing now and then my body's absorbing may have a long term effect and I did know that the the other stunt coordinator that I worked with his name was Joey uh, is that the last I heard I haven't seen him in over twenty years but even twenty years ago when he was in his thirties and forties he was banged up so much he could barely walk. And I can just imagine now uh, that he's probably in his uh, in his sixties now. Yeah, assuming he's still alive. Just uh, is he uh, is he how, how healthy is he? Yeah. And and the, and the thing is, we uh, we, uh, we we take for things for granted in our younger ages, not realizing what the repercussions are going to be at a later time. Mm -hmm. So so uh, so that, that you told me some things about reverse engineering from a goal, which I mean I, I do talk about that. It, it is in my second book. However, I don't hear too many people talk about it that way. So could you give us an example of, say, doing reverse engineering with somebody's, uh, a new client's uh, help? Like Absolutely. seeing where they are right now, where they want to be, and then how do you how do you get them on that path? Absolutely. And that's just exactly what we do. It's just like we talk about what what would be their way to feel more thriving and just, you know, instead of just surviving, you know, what does that look like? And, and so I want to hear from them what's important to them. I mean, you know, how many people always tell you that, you know, you should have, could have, would have, but anyways, but finding out what it is. And for example, if they need to be sleeping better at night, then we talk about the ways to be able to, to get to there again, those steps and then reverse engineering it and then taking one step at a time and then celebrating. And then you have to maintain it. <laughs> I've heard so many people talk about, you know, I mean, I've stayed six sizes down for 17 years. I'll never dive again. But, you know, I have to maintain it. And so for me to maintain it, I know the steps that I need to do every single day. And it doesn't mean I don't get to enjoy pizza and beer and enjoy life and fun and celebrating and those types of things. We learn how to counterbalance. We learn how to make those, again, plan, prioritize, and just, you know, do those things um, that we know are going to be good for us. I mean, that's what self-care is all about. I can't do it for you and you can't do it for me. And so talking with somebody to find out where it is, where they want to be, and then where they want to stay and maintain. And then when life happens, because it will, <laughs> then you have to be able to know some different alternative ways to get back and to build that immune system back up, whatever it takes, or you know, to get on that healthy journey again. Because that's really, Kevin, what it is. It's a journey. I tell people, I'll no. them, we're just taking care of these temporary temples until we get our permanent maintenance-free ones. <laughs> and, that, mm -hmm. and I said, and it's even more important than it's fireproof. And they go, yeah. <laughs> that's well, to, to know what you were saying about, about dieting and you know whatever you're getting from that point A to that point B that you that, that final point B, but the thing is, I think what you said, uh, how what resonated with me was, it's not necessarily you know I, I got to diet to get down to this weight or I got to do this to start getting seven eight hours of sleep an hour. I got to do this, which is fine. That's what you got to do. And you talked about maintaining it. Well, the only way that you're going to maintain it is to actually have a lifestyle change. Yeah. It is. And in this country, too, one of the things I was um, reading a great book from this doctor in France, and she was talking about how, especially in this country, everybody wants to lose fat, lose weight, whatever. She said, you need to have the mindset change. I need to build muscle. I need to maintain muscle. And that's your goal, because our muscles are the reason why our bones and everything keep us upright and keep us moving. And the other thing is, there's, mm. you know, the glucose and the anti-inflammatory foods and the different things. You can eat the exact same foods, but just eat them in a different order and you don't have the sugar spikes. And so 
there's little fun things that, you know, we can share with um, other people. And if they choose to incorporate it, great. If not, okay, I DNR, you can bless and release. <laughs> Hmm. All right. Well, uh, and I think we we talked about this, uh, you know, prior to the show. But I also wanted to talk a little bit about you know, you as a business owner, you say you've been doing it for over forty years. Uh, I've been a business owner since uh, nineteen ninety nine, and you. When I talk about that, I usually will uh, say I, I'm not going to tell you what year I became a, a business owner. However, the last full time corporate American job that I had, I was a computer programmer for this thing called Y two K. You figure out the year. <laughs> Yeah. But anyway, um, so I, I've been a business owner in the for over 20 years. So you've you've got me twice that. Um, and I'm sure that you've gone through a, a quite a few challenges. Because you told me, you said already earlier that you've had some businesses that you, you sold, some of them that were flops. Could you, could you uh, on your entrepreneurial journey, could you tell us a little bit about one of the challenges uh, that you have, one of your bigger challenges that you had? And then how did you overcome that challenge? I think one of the biggest challenges that I started out with is that I thought I could do it all by myself and get it all <laughs> done. And, you know, and then when, you know, Google came around and all these different things, you know, you, you can only research in Google so much, especially back then because we didn't have the AI and all the things that we have available now to help us. But I think asking for help and accepting it would have been one of my big things that I would have done differently, Kevin. Um, and because, you know, Somebody has the gifts and talents to create a website. I don't want to create a website. I mean, you know, I tried and did all this kind of stuff. But also finding those great business resources for small businesses. And that, mm -hmm. and I've hired coaches and stuff in the past too. But there is so many great resources out there with SCORE and small business um, alliances and associations. And even, you know, some of the chambers in different places. Shoot, we used to go to the library. <laughs> and get resources you know from the the government and stuff but um i think one of the biggest things is just like you said you had an incredible accountability partner you had somebody to be able to bounce ideas off with and to talk with and i think it's so important to run those things past if you've got a, a getting ready to launch or you're going to do something new have some other people give you feedback and it's not that you know so much for especially for women i don't know about men but you know when we come up with a new bright idea you know we have to test it we have to poll and find out if it, anybody's gonna like it besides just us and so you know i think it's really important again to bring in collaborations to bring in partners to bring in accountabilities to have your own little mastermind groups um and then find the people that you trust and that's usually through networking to help you with those things, you know, whether it's your computer tech, I mean, whether it's, you know, your systems, whether it's, you know, platforms that you're using. Um, marketing is huge. People think, I used to tell a lot of women, I say, you know what, we've got this great business and we were just sort of like sitting in this closet. We're waiting for somebody to open the door, turn on the light and go, yay, there you are. I've been looking for you. It doesn't work that way. Marketing and exposure um, and in this day and time, oh my gosh, there's so much noise and so much stuff going on. How do you stand out? How do you, you know, because there's always somebody that does what we do. We we can't be so, you know, there's always going to be that. And I believe in abundance. I believe there's more than enough for everybody. And I mean, you definitely couldn't do all the work if you had everybody as <laughs> your client and your customer. But again, collaborating, tapping in bringing in, you know, where there's two or more that makes it stronger, that um, links, but finding again, those resources and tapping into them. I think virtual assistants, I call them value assets, have been huge over the years to take off some of the busyness and the things that, you know, would just keep you up because you're trying to get it all done all by yourself. And I agree with that because I mean, I was I started using VAs back in like 2012. I mean, I, I and you know, I just went to a, a a professional company. I think it was out of the Philippines, and they helped me with my real estate business. Yes, they were in the Philippines, they were in Manila or some you know whatever city that they're in. But and I was in Las Vegas, but they're the one building all my flyers, all my my website stuff. So, so I just I just said, you know what? Let me have somebody else do this. Because one of the things I, I learned a long time ago, and I'll even credit the person who gave it to me. It was a guy named uh, Marshall Silver. And uh, 
and he had uh, had a, ha had this idea that says, "What is your uh, what is your hourly time worth?" Mm -hmm. Ask yourself, "What is your hourly time worth?" If you say five dollars, okay, twenty five dollars, okay, five hundred dollars, okay. How much does it cost to have some a maid come over and clean your house? Well, it's about uh, it's about going to be let's say eighty dollars. I go okay. Now let's say you go and do that. You're five hundred dollar rate, but you're now working for eighty dollar an hour uh, rate. So you have to you have to start looking at that. Second thing I would like to uh, um, uh, make note from what uh, Nancy just said is uh, is hey hey Nancy, if I came to you and I needed help, would you help me? Yes or no? Most likely, most likely. Oh, I know you. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Okay, so 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 if somebody you. came to you that you liked their and trust and they needed your help, would you help them? Absolutely. Then why why would you be so afraid to ask somebody else for help? Because you because you get you get that good feeling when you help somebody else. So if you if you decide not to ask somebody for help, you try to do it all on your own. What are you taking away from that person that could have helped you? Absolutely. It's a different that, mindset because people are willing to help, but they're not, they don't have willing to be asked, asking for help. It's like if you change your mindset around that, then this is going to be something that could be very, very huge in your business. And if the last thing you said about, you know, having a team of people, that is going to be true as well with whatever you do. You don't like building websites. So why would you spend all day trying to figure out how to figure out WordPress or Wix or, you know, whatever other platform that you could be using? Hire somebody else to do it for you. And I'll tell you probably the biggest biggest lesson that I learned about that was when I was writing my first book that was called Lease Options Made Easy. And this was 2015. And I, and oddly enough, when I was put together my book, you know, I was smart enough to have somebody else do my graphic design. I was smart enough to have people do other aspects of the book, but I was trying to figure out how to do the formatting. And I had the hardest time. I probably spent an entire month, hours and hours and hours, how to do page numbers. Just turn on the page number. <laughs> That's all I wanted to do. It, because it, as you may know, in a book, the book does not start on page one. <laughs> page one is usually probably the 13th or 15th page in the book, especially if you've got testimonials and your cover page and your copyright page and your acknowledgments and about the, not the, about the other, but the foreword. You, you've got all of those other things, your dedications, all of that comes before even your table of contents, all of that comes before your page one. And I spent hours trying to figure it out. And then I finally thought, why don't I just pay this guy on five or 20 bucks to do it for me? <laughs> I've used fiber over the years. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, so the thing is, don't uh, don't be causing yourself so much stress and, st and struggle because you're afraid to ask for help. The thing is, there are people out there that are experts in the areas that you're not the expert, and have them do use their talents and their skills and help them build their and, and run their business. I mean, we're all a symbiotic relationship, you know, between everybody on this planet. Why not? Why not help other people out? If somebody, else, if you pay somebody else to do your website and they can get it done, let's say in a week, and now you can open up your doors and have your online uh, commercial business. Well, now, yeah, you may have paid a couple of hundred dollars or a couple of thousand dollars, but now you're open for business and you can start raking in money and all kinds of money. Mm -hmm. I know. And going back to when you were talking about um, helping in. Years ago, I would share with women, too, because, you know, we were just so self-sufficient, you know, oh, I can get it done. I can do it. You know, when somebody comes to volunteer and, and even like in churches, it's the same people that are always volunteering, doing the same things. And so something that we're also volunteering when somebody comes and asks you to do something and, you know, you have already are committed to hear. No is a great word. And I just, you know, also you can say. You know what? Thank you so much for asking, but let's see if we can find somebody else that could be a better fit at this time. And you can help them do that. But on the other hand, too, when you've got a need and someone comes and they just like you said, had that expertise or whatever, and they're volunteering or, or even asking to be able to help you or whatever. It takes a blessing away from them if you go. No, thank you, because, you know, they were inclined to be able to come and and offer that. And when you reject that, I mean, it's a domino effect. Everything we say yes to, we're saying no to. Everything we say no to, we're saying yes to. And, you know, being wise enough to be able to say, thank you. I would love to have your help. And yes, that would really help me in this situation. And you have just, like you said, it made them feel better. It's using their gifts and their talents. Um, so I agree with you completely. It is. It's all about the relationships.
And the, and the other word that just came to my mind, um, the, 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 when you were trying to say all that, it, it's uh, it's also good karma. It is. It's telling the universe that you're coming from abundance rather than scarcity. Yeah, it is. And and that really reminds me of a quote that, that I came up with a few years ago, and and I have a meme for it. It's a person holding up a coin. It's, it's a foreign coin. It's not American coins, but you know, it's kind of like a little gold one in the center, like a one of the Canadian uh, two dollars or Hong Kong uh, bills or, or coins. And what I said was scarcity and abundance are the opposite sides of the same coin. Yeah, it is. It, so it is. Then, then the second part of that coin was, which side are you looking at? <laughs> you better flip that coin. I know. <laughs> flip that coin. Um, so since so you uh, shared with us about some of your challenges, why don't you share us about one, one or two of, you, of your great successes? Now, as we know with this show, this Business Amplified show, is all about getting out of your comfort zone so that you can get more exposure, so that more people know who you are and thereby uh, uh, increasing your business. So what are some successes that you have by putting yourself uh, outside your comfort zone? Now, it could be anything from going networking or, or doing something else. Well, I really see... Um, that one of the things that years ago too, especially talking about money and money has to keep moving to make money and to grow. And sometimes when we work with one certain company or whatever, we feel like, you know, we just have to stay focused on working with that one company. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, no, as long as it's not a conflict, then you need to make sure that you've got different streams of income coming in, you know, filling up your pool, you know, it doesn't have to be one just place. And I think being open and flexible to know when to let go of some things and then to be open to others, the only way we can receive is if we keep those hands open to, to release and to receive and to give, and they never close. And so I think some of my successes too is having you know multiple streams of income, being able to see how, how money works as a tool. But also I think one of my biggest blessings is being able to sow into other people kevin um to be able to sow in some hope and some encouragement some wisdom some you know from experience some things being permission based may i share something that might could benefit you or you know what if you hear something and it all of a sudden it just goes <laughs> um and you can just say you know what may i make a suggestion how you could reframe that or Maybe this is not the right time. So I think for me, again, it's all about those relationships, successes. Okay. People have told me years ago, you're a walking encyclopedia. You should write a book, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, I don't want to write a book. And so <laughs> I've learned you don't tell the Lord you don't want to do something. So four books later, I'm going, I'm not saying what I'm not going to do anymore. I'm going to say I'm open to learning and I'm open to doing and sharing and evolving and even today, I mean, I, in my brain, a couple of weeks ago, a new thought and a new idea came about to help me open up a different kind of branch in my business to serve a different demographic of one of which I have become recently. So, you know, I want to continually be learning, never stop, but also receiving and giving. And to me, you know, as an entrepreneur, we get to pick and choose who we work with. We get to mm -hmm. pick and choose our work times. If I'm going to work from the beach or whatever for three months or three weeks or whatever, I'm going to do that. If I choose that I'm going to just, you know, take some time off um, to go through some other planning or uplifting times, I think that's the beauty of it. When you continually work towards getting to, um, we never quote you arrive. I mean, when you're an entrepreneur, you're always going to be an entrepreneur. And it doesn't matter, you know, the time or whether it's a lot of time or short time. But when we're serving, to me, that's really, you never stop serving others. That was a, that was very well, well said. Thank you very much, Nancy. So, uh, so Nancy, as we're wrapping up the show, um, if somebody here is resonating with you, you know, what you're saying, either about their health or, or about something else, how could they uh, get a hold of you? Well, they can just go to my website, thehealthysaleschick.com. I'm also on LinkedIn and social medias, but um, I love just setting up a time just to talk with people, just to hear their celebrations. But probably through my website, thehealthysaleschick.com, there's a way that they can set up a time to schedule just a fun time for us to chat for 20 minutes. 
Okay. Well, there, oh, there you have it. It's at the, the healthy sales chick, C H I C K mm -hmm. com. Yeah. Okay, there you go. The, and and for those of you who are listening out to this show and you feel like maybe you've got a message or you've got something that you would like to share with the world, I, I will also volunteer to have you guys go ahead and schedule a 15 minute uh, pre interview uh, with us. Uh, to see if you uh, if if your message actually resonates with our audience and, and for that you can go to businessamplified.net forward, forward slash pre-interview again that's businessamplified.net forward slash pre-interview well nancy i i had a great pleasure having you uh, on the day I'm, I'm glad some of the things that you say because these are things i've been saying to myself i just don't hear other people saying so that was a, a true treasure trove of information so uh nancy uh, any last words before we say goodbye no, I want to thank you so much, Kevin, and I appreciate what you're doing for other people, bringing resources, great things um, to help other business owners to be able to just continually rise up and continue to scale. And you know what? If somebody wants to do something, do it, because we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So you better just take the whole leap and just say, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I'm going to dovetail off that a little bit as well, because the, the the last thing that you want to do is say, "No, nah, I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it off." And then 30 years later, 40 years later, instead of saying, "Gosh, I wish I did. I wish I could. I wish I did do that," and you have regrets, and that's the that's the one probably to me one of the biggest uh, the problems, uh, at least in American society. I can't tell about the other world, the rest of the world, is that a lot of people uh, do have a lot of regrets for things they should, they wish they would have done. So my thing is to dovetail off what Nancy said. Yes, good. just say yes and go do it and then figure out how later. And that's one thing Richard Branson, I think I learned from him, was uh, yeah, he, I, he just say yes, figure out the yeah, figure out the how at a later time. So just so it's for an example, if someone says, Hey, hey, Joe Boss, said, would you like to give a talk to these 30 people and you've never given a talk before? You answer, uh, what is your answer? It is going to be yes. Now, how the heck am I going to put together a talk? That's because that to me is one of the biggest inspirational things that you can do is when you put yourself under the fire and, and, and you step yourself outside your comfort zone. That is when true opportunity, in my opinion, is that that's that is where that uh, resides. Absolutely. Well, well, Nancy, thank you for having us here. I do want to say uh, thank you for those of you who are listening to the podcast. So join, us for, join us for some of our other shows. Share our shows. Bring other people to, uh, to the show. We try to give as much great information as possible in the short amount of time that we have. Usually this, these shows are right around the 30-minute time slot. So I want to make sure that you're, you, if you're driving to work, driving home from work, this is the perfect time just for uh, for you to listen to a show. So, Nancy, th thank you again for uh, being here today. And, guys, until next time, be amazing. Thanks for tuning in to another empowering episode of Business Amplified with Kevin A. Dunlap. If you found value in today's insights, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. Keep amplifying your business. And remember, your success journey is our inspiration. Until next time on Business Amplified, go out there and make your business thrive.